Finn and Jin, by J.C.R. Derlin. Read by Google Translate. Finn didn't want to go in Thrift Hunt Island with his parents. It's boring in there, he told them. All they have is a bunch of old junk. But his parents, not about to leave him in the car by himself, insisted he go in. I'm sure you'll find something, his mother assured him. Thrift shops get all kinds of interesting things all the time. Finn crossed his arms. Uh-huh, he said. Hey, said Finn's dad. You might even find an Atari like Uncle Paul had. You think so? Finn said. Yeah, dad replied. I've seen plenty of them in thrift stores before, sometimes with a whole collection of games. Really? Finn said, starting to get excited. Why don't you come on in with us and find out? His mother said. Finn opened the car door and stepped out. Inside, there was antique furniture, clothes hanging from round display racks. Shoes organized in a cubby console, shelves littered with knick-knacks, and bookshelves filled with old books and other misc items. There's got to be a toy section here somewhere, Finn thought. And maybe they'll have one of those Ataris like Uncle Paul had. Finn asked a girl who worked there if they had toys. She pointed over to the end of the store. Finn asked her if they had an Atari. It's possible, she said. We did have one not too long ago. People donate things here all the time. When you hear the bell ringing, that's when new inventory is being put out. Finn said thanks. And walked to the end of the store and viewed the toy section. There was a small toy keyboard with bright multicolored keys, an orange plastic bucket with matching trowel, a shape sorting cube toy dump truck, along with strollers, stuffed animals, and other toys for toddlers. It's just a bunch of babies' toys, he said, just before the sound of a bell rang out. Finn went over to the middle-aged lady who was pushing a cart full of items. Mind if I take a look? he asked. Not at all, she said. Take your time. Finn looked through the cart. There was a small pillow, picture frames, a vase, an old clock, and a plastic dinnerware set which had never been opened. See anything ya like? She asked. Um, no, he muttered. Not really. Well, she said, if you need any help with anything, just ask. And then she went to go put up the items. Finn's impression about these kinds of shops were confirmed. They're dull and boring. Finn decided he'd never go into one of these types of stores again. Finn, he heard a voice call. Finn, over here. He looked around and didn't see anyone. Was it mom? He thought. Is she calling from the back of the store? Why would she be in there? We're not allowed back there. Finn entered the back of the store where all the inventory was being sorted. Something shiny stood out to him. It was gold, bright shiny gold. He approached the pile and fished it out. It was an oil lamp. It had a mirror finish. There were little letters etched on it in a language he couldn't read. It felt very heavy, like it might be made of solid gold. He took it to his parents and asked if he could have it. They inspected it, looking for a price on it, but couldn't find any. Finn's father asked the clerk at the checkout about a price, but the clerk said he didn't know. Then the middle-aged woman who had been placing and organizing the new items, stopped, and walked over. Finn was afraid she might figure out that he snuck in the back where he wasn't supposed to go. But she said that she didn't know how it got there. She hadn't seen it before. Finn's parents said that Finn found it. Oh him, she said. He can keep it. I'm the owner of Thrift Hunt Island and I don't mind. Yes, Finn thought. The golden lamp was all his. He wondered what the kids in school would think about his shiny new treasure. His parents checked out their items and they loaded up the car. On the way home, Finn and his father talked about gold and how much it was worth. His dad said it was worth a thousand dollars or more for a gold coin. With the heavy lamp in his hand, which shone bright shiny gold in the sunlight, he wondered how many thousands of dollars he had just been given for free. He asked how much his lamp might be worth. Oh, his mother said. 
I think he thinks it's gold honey. No champ, his dad said stopping at the traffic light. It's gold plated, probably made of brass. It might be worth a few dollars at most. Don't say it like that honey. Mom said, what your dad is trying to say is, even though your lamp is not solid gold, it's still gold plated. I know people that are collectors and pay a lot of money for the things they collect. Your lamp might be worth a lot in the eyes of someone who collects metal antiquities. Finn's heart sank. The lamp wasn't worth anything. It was just another knick-knack. While his mom would say things just to make him feel better, his dad always told him the straight facts. He held the lamp in his hands and saw the reflection of his disappointed-looking face staring back at him. When he got home, he set the lamp down on his dresser and changed into his G. It was time for him to go to karate class. He then left his room and made his way for the car, which his father was still sitting in, ready to take him to his karate lessons. As they drove off, the lamp, which was still sitting on Finn's dresser, began to shake, and then it fell on the floor. Later that night, when Finn returned home into his bedroom, and got in his bed, then his eyes suddenly fixed on the shiny object which was sitting on his nightstand. It was the oil lamp. I thought I put it on the dresser, he thought. How did it get there? He picked it up and examined it closely. He then noticed a discolored spot on the lamp and rubbed it with his thumb, seeing if it would come off. Suddenly, red smoke ascended from the spout of the lamp, and shifted into the figure of a person. He flung the blankets over himself and hid. It spoke to him. I just knew you would find me Finn. A voice said in a high-pitched and squeaky tone. It sounded like a teenage girl's voice. Thank you for freeing me. What? Finn said through the covers. It's been horrible Finn, the voice said. I've been stuck in that stupid lamp for centuries, and it was super boring. Stuck in the lamp? Finn thought. Did I just release a genie? This has to be some kind of dream or something. He figured he'd play along with the dream. Finn took off the covers and saw the translucent girl glowing bright red who floated by his bed. Hello, she said. I'm pleased to meet the person who set me free. My name is Aza, and I'm a djinn. Wow, Finn said, his eyes growing wide with excitement. You're a real genie? You betcha. Watch this. Aza spun around and around faster and faster until she turned into a bunny. Look I'm Bugs Bunny she said, in the Bugs Bunny voice. Finn laughed. You don't look like him. You look like a real-life bunny. How am I supposed to know what he looked like? Aza said, turning back into her normal look. I've been trapped in that lamp. If you haven't watched Bugs Bunny then how do you know about him then? Don't be silly Finn, she said. I could still hear the TV while in the lamp. Oh. So when do I get my three wishes? Anytime, Aza said. Awesome. I wish for an Atari game system with all the games and accessories that's ever been made for it. Finn. Your wish is my command. Aza snapped her fingers and a sparkle of light lit up the room. Cool. Finn exclaimed. He looked around for a moment. Where'd you put it? I don't see it anywhere. Don't you know that it takes time for it to manifest? No, that's not how it works in Aladdin. That's just a movie, Finn. Movies get stuff wrong all the time. So how long do I have to wait? Aza giggled. Um, probably 24 hours. Something like that. Aza giggled to herself again. A whole day? Yep. Oh alright. Got any more wishes? Not right now. I gotta think about what I want. Okay, just let me know. I'm going to bed now. Okie dokie, said Aza. Good night, said Finn. He switched the light off and made for his bed, but Aza was still there hovering, her magical aura lighting the room red. Aren't you going to go? Go where? I'm not going back in that dumb old lamp. No way. But you can't stay here making the room bright red while I'm trying to sleep. Aza stopped glowing red. She became a dim pink. There, she said. All better. So you're just going to stand there and watch me sleep? 
That's creepy. You're going to freak me out, Aza. Well, where else can I go? Finn turned the light back on and opened up his closet. In here, there's not enough room. I won't be able to fit in there. Hmm. Let's see, Finn said, thoughtfully. If you leave my room then my parents might see you. And you can't go back in the lamp. Hmm. Okay, I think I've got another idea. Finn took the extra pillows and blankets out from his closet and lay them out on the floor. Sleep here, I don't need to sleep Finn. I'm a djinn, remember? Can you just pretend to sleep? That way you won't be up wandering around my room or staring at me. All right, you freed me from the lamp. So this is the least I could do in return. But what about granting my wish? Oh, Aza giggled. That too. That night Finn slept and Aza pretended to sleep on the floor. But of course, when she heard him start snoring, she knew she could start snooping around his room and plundering. She put everything back where it was before morning. She didn't want to risk Finn waking up to see her looking through his stuff.